Hey guys, I hope you're having a good day. I just finished a long day of flying and here I am in Tennessee, so I want to have a discussion about difficult people. This week I met a flight attendant who's a foster mom and um, when I looked at her three week old foster baby that she's hoping to adopt, I commented on how the baby was really heavily trying to gasp for air and so that's when she revealed to me that the mother had been doing cocaine and heroin while she was pregnant. So this little tiny newborn is having withdrawals from it. And in that situation, we can say that maybe for this foster mom and the, and the baby, the challenging person in the life would be the birth mother. And you could want to be angry and resentful toward her and speak badly about her and you can put her in a position of enemy over this newborn so I want to also include situations like that in this and any in your life that you can think of um, sometimes it's with that ex who you have custody over your children with and the Bible says that we have to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. And that is so backwards to what we really want to do. And yet, anybody who falls under the status of enemy, anybody who's really not quite an enemy, not somebody who's maybe after you, trying to kill you, but everybody who falls under the status of enemy is included in this. And um, so my personal situation, which I'm not going to share details of, you can use your imagination, um, I used to really, really struggle to be in the room with this person for even five minutes. I would have seething anger in me just having to hear them speak and the challenges of interacting with them. So when I would, I would excuse myself from the room and just try to like bring it back together. I always tried not to talk about this person, but sometimes I would derail a little bit because if I were just to tell people the difficulties I have with them, they were oh, the people that were listening were always in agreement with me and it kind of egged me on to want to like share more and um, just for the reaction. And so finally one day I had to stop myself and say, wait a minute, I'm not honoring you, God, and, and I know what you have told me to do. I'm gonna try that, and this is what happened. The first time that I prayed for this person, I did not expect it to be this uncomfortable, and actually not just uncomfortable, but I was cringing inside. It was really challenging. And um, I'm trying to pray for this person from a position of like, okay, how would I want someone to pray for me? And if I'm praying for this person and saying, God, please bless this person. I felt like I couldn't even get the words out at first. Um, God, please just put your hand over this person's life. Whatever challenges they're experiencing, please give them guidance. For some reason, just praying stuff like that was, was, it was, it was a real struggle. So as the days went on, it got easier to pray for this person. And then I was not expecting what happened next, which was really that I think I was the one that was starting to change. And I started to delight in praying for them because it was like, yeah, why would I not pray for this person? I don't know if there's anybody else who is. Um, if you think about it, imagine that you are the person that is being the difficult one and the challenging one. You're the enemy toward this person, okay? Imagine that there's nobody in your life petitioning God on your behalf, but one person, one person who is praying that you would be blessed praying that God would give you wisdom and guidance and care and comfort. And that one person was that person that you are being difficult toward. 
I mean, it's just like, I think God's ways are actually pretty awesome, aren't they? <laughs> so here I am being the prayer person in this person's life. And boy, God starts doing work on my heart. Next thing you know, I'm in situations where people are sharing the stories about difficult people, you know, gossiping. And suddenly I have no desire to talk about this person anymore because I don't want to bring their dirty laundry out into the open and other, like, I just, I feel like I want to just kind of protect them. Like I care about them. I don't want to expose them to others just for the juiciness of it, for the reaction of sharing their shocking life. <laughs> then I found myself not wanting to complain about this person. And you know, God says that we should not, um, that we should not have complaining or arguing in our lives. And I think that just by praying for this person, the spirit of God was producing fruit in me on behalf of this person. Like I was not even wanting to complain about them. I was wanting to actually defend them and say, you know what? I was starting to see in their life where they may be reacting or being this way because of other forces in their life, you know? I started to actually care about them and love them. I started to see that God loves them. I think that is the turning point. And that is a great way. I mean, you could even start with that and say, okay, God, please show me why you love this person. And if you can't even get inspiration in that, just realize that if no other person existed in this earth, God loves that person so much that he would still have lived a perfect life and died for them so that he can pay their debt. He loves them in their sin, just like he loves me in my sin. That's like, once you can start to see the person through God's eyes, okay, this person is someone God cares so much about that he would die for them. I can't, I can't talk bad about them or complain about them because God loves them. What ended up happening for me was not what I expected. I ended up spending an hour in the room with this person, actively engaged in talking. And you guys, the amount of joy that I felt was unreal. I walked out of that room beaming. I wanted to share with my husband about this wonderful, um, you know, conversation and everything we talked about with this person that I used to not even be able to spend five minutes with without feeling like anger stirring in me. So I knew that what had happened was just supernatural. I mean, really, this is, this is what living in the kingdom of God produces in my heart. And, um, it's really nice to remove all of that tension. Well, there is still sometimes tension because the person is still the same person. And, um, but somehow there is so much joy in that relationship. And I feel like it's a lot easier for me to lay down my disgust or anger, like so much faster when little opportunities arrive, arise that would cause me in the past to just be like, oh, I can't take this person anymore. I don't want to, I don't even want to have anything to do with them. And now it's like, I care about them. Like they're a family member or a friend, like in my circle. And, um, that's what I want for you. I'll go back to the, what I mentioned earlier about the foster mom. She's doing it right. She is doing it right. She was telling me when she was sharing about the birth mother, I could just hear in the way she talked with care and with love about that woman, that she knew God and that she was seeing that woman, the birth mother, the way that God sees her. And then later in the conversation she did, she, we started talking and realized, yes, we're both believers. And she, um, she prays with this little newborn together for his mommy. They pray together. And 
I don't know if anybody else is praying for that birth mother. Right now she's sitting in jail, but God knows she's there. And there is somebody who is petitioning God on her behalf. And um, I just think that's amazing how God invites us into that. So I hope that this was encouraging to you because, you know, it's, it's not easy. I don't know your personal situation, but God does. And regardless of what the situation is, he calls us to love and to pray for our enemies. So um, I will continue. And I, um, I would like to see that many more victories come out of praying for those that persecute us. All right. Um, thank you for watching and I hope you have a good day. Bye.